Hey everybody, welcome back to Auto Scholar with Mr. B. I'm Mr. B, don't forget to like and subscribe. Today we are looking at this 2011 Range Rover HSC Sport. This is a, uh, a non-supercharged with the uh, five liter engine in it. And uh, it belongs to a friend of mine. He was complaining to me about a uh, an alternator or a charging system error light that was coming up on the dash. So I said, no problem, we'll take a look at it. So first step, I went ahead and did a alternator or a charging system test with my Medtronics tester. And it came back as the alternator was weak. The alternator was charging, it just was not charging to the level that we were hoping it to charge and it was out of specification. So automatically we uh, go ahead and just, I checked all the connections very quickly and went ahead and condemned the, the uh, alternator. So got another alternator from the local parts house. I'm not gonna put their name out because they're all about the same. But um, we, we ran into problems ever since. So I wanted to go ahead and get into kind of how I diagnose this vehicle and kind of give you some pitfalls to this system and things you should look for if you have that dreaded charging system light come on on your vehicle. So the engine had a code in it. The engine control module had a code for a P0A1A, which is a charging system malfunction code. Um, also had you know various low voltage codes throughout the car just because the, the alternator wasn't putting out the correct voltage. So with these cars, if you don't get the correct voltage, it does all kind of strange things. So what we did, went ahead and got an alternator, swapped it out, cranked it up, no problem, everything was great. And I went to pull it out on a test drive and the charging system light came back on. So brought it back in, started picking it apart, thought maybe we had a bad alternator. Now the problem is, is there's no way to really bench test these alternators because they're computer controlled. So um, got to look and found a technical service bulletin and uh, the TSB that I found was LTB00643NAS1 and it was issued February uh, back in 2014. So this has to do with a battery charge warning lamp on with DTC B11DB-87, which is a code that can set in your body control module. Uh, this ended up not being the problem that we had, but I do want to go over it because I think it's important that you look at all options before you start condemning these four or $500 alternators out there. And this could be a problem that's causing the alternator not to charge. So I'm gonna show you guys um, this has to do with the battery maintenance or the battery management system on these vehicles. And these vehicles are a little bit, as far as the charging system go, as far as I'm concerned, the charging system is just a little bit more complicated than it needs to be on this vehicle. So we need to understand the charging system, how it works, and then we can properly diagnose it. So uh, I'm gonna go over and show you guys what it takes to get this TSB done and what it's talking about as far as fixing a problem. Okay, so I think before we get too deep into this, we need to go ahead and talk about this, just the different pieces of the charging system that we're gonna be dealing with today. So, of course, this is the battery. We're gonna to have to remove and replace this battery uh, if it's faulty, so you need to check this. If you have uh, any type of weak battery, anything like that, we need to go ahead and replace it. That's first things first. These uh, cars right here, they have so much electronic stuff in them that if we have any low voltage from a weak battery, we will of course have to remedy that before we do anything else. So here is our positive um, cable here and it has a large fuse in here in this plastic housing. There is a large fuse that if this blows, you'll probably lose just about everything in the car. So if you jump the car off backwards, if this battery somehow shorts out, anything like that, that fuse will blow and this is gonna give you all kinds of problems. Your negative battery terminal, you have your battery control module is right here and you have two pins that go to it. And what this does is it monitors the starting and charging and everything of the whole system. So we need to make sure that if you have an issue here, we go ahead and we have to replace the whole cable, okay? So there is also, if this TSB has not been done yet, you'll notice that on this bolt right here, there will be a one wire coming off and the wire is brown with a blue tracer or blue with a brown tracer. I don't know exactly. It seems about halfway. 
and you have this wire, which in the TSB, you have to move this wire from here to here and reroute it, okay? So I've already done that, but I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna pull the battery out here in a second, but I just wanted to, to show you what this looks like, you know, why the battery's in the vehicle, give you just a point of reference. So first thing we need to do for the TSB is to remove the battery and remove this wire right here from this. So it's a little 10 millimeter, you take that off, remove that, just lay it off to the side, when you're taking the battery off uh, of any car, you want to go negative first, but it's very important on this car to go negative first and then take the positive off. So I went ahead and took the negative off because I have the alternator off of this car. I'm going to go ahead and take the positive off, pull the battery out, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so this TSB has really everything to do with this wire right here. So this is the wire that was mounted over here earlier. And it lays normally down in here and it's it's kind of attached to another harness, which we uh, kind of just, this other harness right here is your transport harness. So this, when the car was new, this was plugged into something that kept the battery from going bad while the car was being shipped. And we don't need to worry about this. Matter of fact, the TSB says to cut it off and insulate it. I didn't do that. I just tucked it away to the side um, because no telling if we might ever need that again. Uh, you have your battery vent here that's also taped up in this. And you just cut the tape off, get you a razor blade, and you want to separate this wire right here from that harness, okay? This is that brown and blue wire. And this harness has some fusible links in it. And fusible links are nothing but uh, fuses or circuit protection devices, okay? And it has, it looks like two of them on there. And so what you're gonna do is they want you to cut this and test it. Um, and what you do is just get a multimeter and just make sure that you have continuity between the end here. And you wanna cut this wire, it says about 30 millimeters from the back. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus here. There you go. You see that butt connector here? That's just temporary. I'm gonna make a better connection here. And you wanna measure the resistance here and you should have no resistance in that wire. If you have any resistance in the wire, then they make a repair kit. Now, if you can't find the repair kit, what I would do is just put you another wire in here with an inline fuse holder. You know, I don't think this is much amperage. I'll probably put it like a five or a 10 amp fuse in here. Uh, just to make sure that this circuit is still protected. But this is your sensing wire for your charging system, okay? And this is going to give signal to the battery control module to charge or not to charge the car. And if this is bad, it will default to a, a different charging strategy and it will give you the light on the dash. Now, if this blows, it'll give you the light on the dash, but the alternator will still probably charge at some rate that the computer has decided it needs to charge at. So if you have like a no charge situation, this may not be your problem. Also, this will present that body control module code for the battery control module not having communication because this is also the power wire to your battery control module. Now I have looked because I was gonna pull the wiring diagram up to show you guys where this goes and I cannot find this wire on any wiring diagram that I have. So this is a what we call a ghost wire. It's just something probably put in as an afterthought and but if this wire is bad I uh, if you have a connection issue here then you'll need to put another end on but you want to make sure that you can get power through these fusible links so after you make sure that's good they want you to run this wire around to the back here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fasten it I'm going to take this off right here it just pulls up you don't have to take it all the way out I'm gonna tuck this in down here uh, and run some connectors there so it doesn't move. You wanna bring it up here and it says to um, take this bolt off right here. Of course, you wanna do this with the battery out and attach it here. I guess this is a more of a direct line than where it was. Uh, and it can, you know, it's, if you do it this way, it goes on the other side of that big fuse that I was talking about. So, um, so that's, pretty much the gist of the TSB. And of course you wanna get in there and you wanna clear all codes and crank it up and see if you've got that light off. Now you may wanna give it a minute 
you may have to test drive the vehicle to make sure that that light will stay off because uh, in trial and error on this vehicle, sometimes the battery light would stay off for five, 10 minutes and then boom, it would come on. So definitely wanna give a thorough test before you give the car back to the customer or trust it to do any round town driving. Okay, so the second problem I ran into, after I put this alternator on, I went from an alternator that had some charge to an alternator that didn't have any, okay? So what I found was the, the parts store had a listing for two different alternators, okay? And they were split by a chassis number. And so I got the correct alternator per chassis number. And had a student put on the alternator, it's not a hard alternator to do, probably about an hour it takes. Hardest part is actually getting the belt off. But we put the alternator on, a uh, student plugged this up, which this is the plug that came off the car, I'm gonna have to reattach it. And they slid this plug on. Now you have two connections here. You have, this is the connection that goes directly to the um, alternator. And then you have this connection right here. It's just one pin. You can see down here, it's just one single pin. And that is, uh, you'll get a signal sent out of this alternator. And it's a pulse width modulated signal that tells the computer how fast the alternator is spinning more or less. And that will regulate the charging. So if you don't have this wire plugged up, your alternator will not charge. The problem is, is the alternator they gave me, the plugs are almost the same. And the alternators that you know, the only difference between the two is this plug. They're both 150 amp, but the, and it's not only just this plug, it's the inside of the plug. You'll see these alignment pins in there. And the alternator that I had the first time didn't have quite the right alignment pin in. And so this plug wouldn't go all the way in. It felt like it was going in, but it didn't. So I had a brand new alternator that wasn't charging. It wasn't the alternator's fault. It was just the parts person gave me the wrong alternator. And I don't know if it was misboxed or what, but it drove me crazy for a few hours until I figured that out. So make sure that your plug is plugging in correctly. I would make sure that, you know, your alternator that you took off the vehicle matches perfectly to the one that you're putting on uh, because we missed that step. And that pin inside there, the alignment pin, um, was not the correct alignment pin. So it just, it wasn't clicking all the way in here. And that's what was causing a problem as well. So the, the diagnosis on this vehicle was, it was a bad alternator. We got the wrong alternator and now we got the right alternator. And so I'm gonna put it back together and hopefully that should fix everything. Okay guys, I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back together, crank it up and hope to goodness that this thing will actually be fixed. I'm pretty sure I got it right this time, but. Just wanted to share this with you guys, and I have a lot of videos like this. If I run into something weird um, out there working on cars that really catches me by surprise, I figure it's going to catch other people by surprise as well. So uh, if you can, give me a like on this video if it talked to anything or solved your problem. And of course, subscribe to the channel. I put uh, out at least one of these a week. Uh, it's been a little hectic lately, but I'm getting back into the swing of things. And of course, uh, find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, VK under Auto Scholar with Mr. B. We'll see you next time on Auto Scholar with Mr. B.